there, it's Lizzie from Old Stables Crafts. Thank you for joining me again today. Today I have a little gift project for you. And this, if I open it up gently, you have to be a little bit careful with this, is a tea bag. Now I am a great fan of tea to tea. Um, I think I probably need to take out a second mortgage because uh, I love it so much. It's not expensive per se, but I drink quite a lot of fruit teas and T2 have just got fruit teas down to a T. Sorry, that wasn't intended. Anyway, you can use any tea bag for this, but this is this is what I'm using. What I would say is if you are a T2 fan, um, this is one of their um, one of their loose teas. Um, this is a tea bag. The bags are slightly different. Um, so the tea bag version is slightly taller. You can still use the same measurements, but you do need to just fold the bottom in. Um, and this, by the way, Highland Heather. Heather. However, um, so this is, I've matched with um, Mango Melody, which as you see is not a bad match. It's not perfect, but it's, it's not bad. If I get out my colour swatch, which all of my customers who have received um, the new catalogue from me from having ordered previously, they have got one of these. Um, and my team who ordered in April or May also got one of these. So that's not a bad match, is it? Mango Melody. So this is the Garden Impressions Designer Series Paper. It's a six by six pack. Um, and it has Mango Melody in it. The next one I'm going to make is using Pumping Pomegranate, which is one of my favorite teas. Um, and this is using the Petal Promenade Designer Series paper. And I'm matching this. It's not a perfect match, but I'm matching it to Fresh Fig. It's, it's not, it's too red to be berry burst but it's about right for fresh fig and it certainly goes very nicely with this paper. So I'm going for fresh fig. So um, in case you didn't realise how I find all these colours, underneath on the designer series paper pages, underneath, so if I look at the petal promenade one, you can see they're all listed. They're also listed on the back of the packet when you order it, but they are all listed. Now this particular um, pattern paper um, has the potentially added advantage of matching with both Very Vanilla and Whisper White. The vast majority of our designer series papers do one or the other, but this one actually does both. And I'm going with Whisper White this time. Now, theoretically, the Garden Impressions is Whisper White, but I found that putting white on this, I actually did do it in white first, I think that's too stark for this particular paper, which is why I went with Very Vanilla. And this is the Very Vanilla tulle ribbon, polka dot tulle ribbon, uh, rather than the white, because again, I was going with Very Vanilla. So, um, just so you are aware of where I find all that information. Right, so this is an envelope punch board project. The I have measured this, and it is roughly three and a half inches square. So if you look at your envelope punch board, you've got all your card sizes here, the paper size that you need here, and then where you start your scoring. So I've got three and a half inches by three and a half inches, so I need a piece of six by six paper, and I score at three inches. So this is precisely that. So with the paper, the side of the paper you want facing, so on the outside, you want to pop that into your scoreboard and line up with your three inch edge, punch, score, and then all you do is follow around. Now, because this is square, you can actually line it up with the three inch again, but it's not the easiest paper to see this on. Um, but you can, there's a, there, you can see the score line here, and you mark it, you match it up here. So where it says score guide, you match this tick um, or marker up to the score line that you've just made. 
as I say, because we're using a piece of square paper and we're making a square envelope, for this you can actually just line it up with the three inch mark on your school board. So it is slightly more straightforward, but it's not difficult either way. So just go all the way around, punching all the way, and then I like rounded corners. So I'm going to round my corners. There we go. So don't need those little scraps. I can pop that back in there, which is always handy that you've got your scoring tool with you in your board. Right, so I'm not going to fold these and burnish them. I'm just going to fold these, the edges up because this is a bit bulky, so it's nice to not have everything too, too flat. Um, but I am going to fold all of the edges in. And then on the previous one, I put the sides in and then added the flap over the top. So I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to use liquid adhesive just a little. Um, you could use glue dots for this but I find that liquid adhesive works well, so long as you only use a little. Um, I think more people have a problem with using the liquid adhesive because they use too much than because they don't use enough. So you see that gives you a nice rounded finish. So, and then add a little bit more just along the edges. You could use snail, uh, you could use tear and tape for this. Um, the key, of course, is to get any glue out. Come along, this is a very relatively new jar um, tube, um, but I've had it not on its end, so it doesn't want to run quite so well. And then just fold that up and pop your hand inside and just hold everything down for a little while. Um, this, the edges just fold up while you're doing that, so it's fine. And what I think I will do is just grab myself a block to hold those in place loosely while I do my stamping. So I've got a scrap of Whisper White and I'm using the Label Me Pretty stamp set, which is carried over from the last annual catalogue. And Fresh Fig Ink, this is the old style ink pad, obviously. Um, I'm slowly going to replace my ink pads, but I'm not rushing, because they're still usable. Um, probably won't reflect, re replace my in colours, because they're only with us for another year. So if you want the, um, the ink, ink colours that were 2017-2019, um, do think about getting them, I know it sounds mad, but sooner rather than later. Um, and then I'm using the You're the Best stamp, and I've lined this up so it is straight on the block. So if I stamp it straight on the label, it should come out, yes, straight. So all I did was make sure that my edges were parallel, that's the word I'm looking for. And then, not that punch, this punch, the... Uh, Pretty Label Punch, and again this carried it over from the last annual catalogue. And just line that up and punch. So that's that. Right, okay, so let's bring back in our envelope, which is now nicely all done. And you can see that fits in there jolly nicely. So let's get those out of the way before I put the wrists of my jumper in. It's a nice day today, but it's a little chilly. Uh, right, I'm taking the 1 8 inch circle punch and I'm lining it up. Um, I don't know how easily you can see this. Let's see if I can pop it. Right, yes, you can. So you see here there's this round, this this bit here, and there's a rounded bit inside. So what I tend to do is line up so that that's sort of at the point where the uh, rounded point of the envelope is and then pop it in the middle and then just punch and that gets it a nice distance in and of course you end up with little bits flying everywhere if you're not careful so that's that 
and that will then fold over there. So let's pop our tea bag in and then I'm using this time the metallic edge ribbon in silver and white and I'm coming in from Hmm, I was going to go, yes, I will actually do it this way. I want this to go round, so because this is on the roll, I'm going to go all the way round and up the other side, just so that I end up with a decent length. Yes, I want a little bit more. And then if I cut that there. That will be oop, about the right length. So... Then take this end, which is a little bit frayed, but it should be fine, and just pop that. Now I'm going to need to trim the end. There we go. Pop that, that up through the other side of the hole. So both ends are going to come up through that hole. There we go. The ends will fray a bit as you do that. It's quite easy with the tool ribbon. Just be careful with the tool ribbon because it's got the, the polka dots on it. It is a little lumpy. So um, just be careful as you pull it through that you don't get those lumps catching your circle. So tighten that up. And then all I need to do is tie that in a bow. And I like to tie my bows upside down, if you like, because then the ends seem to go in the right direction. It's probably just the way I tie my bows, but, you know, <laughs> this works for me. And if it works for me, I'm going to do it. There we go. Just trim my ends so they're about the same length and it neatens them off. Now, if you're gifting this and you're worried that the ends are going to fray, you can, there's a choice here, you can either run a little bit of liquid adhesive along or very gently with a candle lighter, you can just touch the edges with a flame um, and it'll just seal the edges. This I'm then going to tuck under so that it still keeps the flap in place. So all I need for that is the ever elusive <sighs> the ever elusive why can I never find stamping dimensionals when I know they're on my desk um 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 buried no those are the mini ones okay there must be some somewhere let's have a look here we go I know oh found them I put the ribbon on top it's sad really isn't it right I need three so I want one at the bottom and then one at each end and then take the backs off and just pop that on the front of my little gift. So there we go. Let me just pop this one sort of back together. So obviously for photographs I will have tied it back but there you go. So very quick, very easy for me. This is only 13, nearly 14 minutes. Brilliant, fast for me. So I hope you enjoyed that. As I say, you can use different tea bags. Um, just change the size of your envelope to match. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you don't already subscribe, it's down in the bottom right hand corner. Just hit that subscribe button and then you will know when I have posted again, particularly if you then hit the bell next to where you've subscribed uh, that will give you a little alert that I have actually posted a new video all the details are in my blog which are the blog post for this is immediately below uh, you will also find my current hostess code um, which if you but when you buy what you need for this uh, on my online store if you use the hostess code you will get to share in the host rewards um, I share those out evenly um, so sometimes it's a stamp set um, if we've had a particularly good month if sometimes it'll be an embossing folder or um, it, it's always product um, so it's always just a nice way for me to say thank you to you even if you don't use the hostess code uh, for every order that is placed 
or for everyone who places an order I will send a thank you card and a thank you gift uh, and they come out about the middle of the following month um, so that I've got everything um, ready to go at the same time. So I hope you enjoyed that and I hope to see you again very soon. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye!